When was the last time something went wrong? That moment where you just thought, <clears throat> Hello, my name is Brendan and today we are going to talk about when shit happens. Sorry for the profanity, but in actual fact, I don't think there's a better way of saying it. You know, we have to deal with life. Life is busy. There's always something going on. I think certainly at the moment, going through COVID, we are all being inundated with additional challenges that we never thought we would really have to face. I get it. Life is demanding. I haven't had to fortunately deal with homeschooling, but I know that over the last three or four months, anybody that's had children and had to teach and work and look after family and look after themselves, I take my hat off to you because it is an incredible endeavour and uh, you really should be, should be praised for doing so. But unfortunately things will always go wrong. Stuff will never go as we intend to. There are chances are that we will always be faced with those environments and those situations where we will have to either decide, that's it, I give up, I tap out, or stuff that, I'm in. I'm going to beat this. Not in a Donald Trump, I have to beat everything, kind of make stuff up as I go along, talk out of nonsense, and really just lie about it, what kind of way. But a... This is a shit situation, but I will beat it. Now, using the current climate, when things go wrong, they can take the form of losing a job, not getting an interview, a relationship ending, a venture could fail. All of these things are here to challenge us. But one point to really remember is that very rarely do problems last a lifetime. What feels really, really big and important and overwhelming now is highly unlikely to still feel exactly the same way in five years time. Much in the same way that money devalues over time, the time it takes to come to grips with a particular situation or a problem or a challenge, over time it will feel better. It will get better, I believe. You might not believe me at this current point in time if you are going through what some may say is just a bit of a shit situation, but I do believe it will happen. You need to stay the course and you need to follow the seven steps that I will tell you shortly to help you overcome the situation when you feel like everything is conspiring against you. Before that happens, there are two things I'd really like you to remember. Ruminating or going over it in your own mind or pondering or just overthinking is bad. Please, please don't do it. We've all probably experienced it. It could be three in the morning when you wake up because you've just got all this going on in your head that you're really just not sure how to deal with. When that happens, it's easy to get carried away with those thoughts. And I've spoken previously about how what we believe isn't necessarily the truth. And I'll put a link in the video to that video. We need to be really clear around how we deal with that. By giving in to the voices inside our head, all we do is create more noise and less clarity. Dealing with what we actually know is hugely important. So if you find yourself ruminating, i.e. just thinking over and over and hypothesizing and going through different scenarios, try this. One, write it down. I know I've talked before about writing stuff down, but I promise you it is really helpful. And at that point, you need to make a decision. Are you one, gonna do something about it? Are you at that point going to take action and deal with whatever you're going over in your mind about? If the answer is no, you need to let it go. Now, there's a, an exercise that I was taught when going through CBT therapy, and it talks around worrying up or worrying down. So the way that it works is on alternative days, you take uh, turns in either worrying up, i.e. overly worrying and thinking about everything, and then on other days, you worry down, so you just don't worry about anything. Water off a duck's back, don't really care, not my problem, properly worry down. Go through it, alternate days, worry up, worry down, worry up, worry down. What you will find is it'll be an interesting exercise, and from my experience, the days where I had to worry about everything, my word is tiring. Really tiring, tiring to just worry about everything because your brain is constantly on the go. Conversely, worrying down is also quite a surreal process because 
just try not to give a shit is actually hard sometimes, especially if you're a relatively conscientious person and you want to please and do well and uh, generally treat people as they should be. Not worrying about situations is hard. But if we bring it back to how we deal with that rumination, the moment you find yourself ruminating about something, write it down and then you have those two choices. You are either going to do something about it or you're going to let it go. Let it go. After you've worried up or worried down, if you tried that, did it make any difference? Chances are, probably not. All that ended up is you were overly worrying about something that in actual fact you didn't either have control about or didn't make a difference. Personal experience, the more I worried, didn't make any difference. The less I worried, didn't make any difference. The actions that I took and what I did about it made the difference. So think about it for a moment. If you do find yourself ruminating and overthinking because you feel like everything is conspiring against you, decide are you going to do something about it here and now? If not, actively let it go. There you go. Bit of an inside tip. So what happens when shit goes wrong? How do we cope and how do we bounce back? Well, I think there are probably seven, do love a list, ways of being able to tackle it. First one to remember is this will pass. I made reference to it at the beginning and it might not feel like it initially, but it will. It cannot stay this bad forever. It's just not possible. You as a person will not allow it to be this bad forever. I know that. Don't give in. Don't give in to the doubt. Don't uh, let the fear and uncertainty overwhelm the positive attitude that you have, even when times are really bad. So, I promise you, it will pass at some point. Number two is that something will be going right. You might not necessarily believe me or really see it at first glance, but I promise you, if you strip back all of the noise and all of the stuff that you feel is is overwhelming you and, and is just derailing you, look for the gold nuggets where something is actually going right, because they will be there. They might not feel like much, But even if it is just somebody phoned to say, hey, I just noticed you weren't yourself the other day. Is all all right? That's because people care. Brilliant. So in all of the noise and in everything else that's going on, look for the nuggets where something is going right, because I promise you, they will be. Number three is all about saying you do have some control. Control is an interesting one because it is ultimately the differentiator between whether we can do something about it and whether we can't. Now, one of the big items is actually being able to say what you can't control, you need to let go of. I've got a video coming, which is all around what happens when things go wrong and how we can deal with that. And that's kind of what we're doing here. But in this instance, I want you to acknowledge what control you do have, you need to deal with. So you do have some control But conversely, what you don't have control of, you need to let go. Don't know what the hands are doing at the moment. But you need to let go because holding on to that means you end up ruminating, which means that you start overthinking, which starts putting you in a spiral and you start to fear and doubt and beat yourself up about it. That's not what we want. So identify what you can control and let go of everything else that you can't. Number four is quite straightforward. Just ask for some help. People are always willing to give you time and help if you ask. It's not a sign of weakness and it can actually be one of the best first steps you can possibly take. Doesn't need to be a therapist or a psychologist, could just be a friend. You know, how often, certainly as a a male, we are often not very good at talking about things. It's a talk to um, my friendship groups and we say, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, good. No, seriously, how are you actually doing? On International Mental Health Day, this is massively important cut through all of the crap. How are you doing? Badly. You know, I just don't feel like I'm good enough. I just don't feel like I'm succeeding. I feel like I'm about to fail. I'm not sure how we're going to pay the mortgage. All these things. Strip it right the way back and have an honest conversation. I promise you you'll feel much better about it. And you might even get some solutions out the back of it too. Number five is all around acknowledging that what you are doing here and now is unlikely to matter in five years time. A bit like getting a speeding fine or losing your license from driving can feel like the end of the world. But in five years time, you'll have your license back 
in certain circumstances, I know that they scrub points and it comes off your record, so the insurance companies won't even know. But here and now, it can feel like the end of the world. You've lost your freedom, you've lost your ability to be able to go where you want, when you want, and you, you might just be beating yourself up about it. There are obviously likely to be bigger issues than losing the ability to drive, but conversely, what you are going through now isn't likely to matter in five years' time. Just remember that. If you don't believe me, try a future pacing exercise. Work out where it is you want to be in five years' time, work back to the previous step in order to get there and bring it all the way back to where we are now. Does it matter? I don't know, you tell me. But just remember, what feels like the end of the world now isn't necessarily going to be so in five years. Number six, I believe, is important because some good will come out of this. Now, by saying yes to a certain situation, something will change. Good, bad, or indifferent. If you say no, nothing will change. So flip it around the other way, when everything is to be going wrong, something good will come out of this. You might not feel like it at the time, but by changing and the, and the situation at the moment evolving and stuff happening to you, something good will come out of it. It, it might not feel like much at the moment, but when I was studying for my accountant's exams, I had to do 14 exams in three years, and I got about a year and a half, two years through, and I just had enough. You know, I, I was desperate to quit, and I just didn't want to carry it on. I didn't see the point. Dad sat me down and said, you know what? It's worth doing. I promise you, you might not feel like it now, but in the future you will look back on these times and A, be thankful for sticking it out. It'll show resilience and hard work, and it'll prove to yourself that you can do it. But also, you will use the skills that you're learning now in the future. You might not feel like it, but I promise you it will happen. Now, I can sit here and say that is most definitely true. I wouldn't have believed you at the time, but the audit skills that I learned over a decade ago have helped me in my recent career because there's a way of thinking, a way of approaching things. And without that training, without going through that hardship, hardship for me at the time because I didn't like sitting exams, was massively beneficial. So I do believe at some point something good will come out of a really shit situation. Just remember that. And number seven, you have overcome difficulties before. You are really resilient. You are able to do amazing things. I've said on numerous occasions that people are capable of more than they realize. Now, sometimes you just need a helping hand and a reassuring word and a hand on the proverbial shoulder. You've overcome stuff previously and you will overcome stuff again. This is the amazing thing about human beings. Now, I'm not going to get all philosophical, but I just want you to know that life has been hard before. We've been facing serious challenges before. But as you sit here listening or watching this now, just cast your mind back to the last time when you thought the end of the world had happened. Relationships had ended and you thought, I'll never find somebody else. The business had gone under and you'd never thought how you'd pay the mortgage. You'd lost a job and you'd thought, how on earth am I going to get my career back on track? But you did it. You will do it again. You know, if you don't believe me, get in touch. More than happily talk you through how you do that. Because as a life coach, I understand the challenges that you're going through. I just want you to remember that there's people out there, including myself, that care about you succeeding and you being okay. Because life is shit. Sometimes stuff does go wrong. I'm sorry, that's the truth. But it's what we do about it that makes us different. So there are seven ways of overcoming a really hard and shit situation. Uh, I hope they've been helpful. Please do just remember that you are capable of more than you realize. And adopting this approach will mean that you give yourself the best possible chance of coming out the other side, not only stronger, but willing to succeed. So before you go, I'd really appreciate it if you would just push the like button and also click subscribe. It just means that you get all of the most recent content uh, as and when it is released. And why not write a comment? You know, Let me know what it is that's gone wrong for you and how you've overcome it. I read all the comments and I would really appreciate hearing from you how things have gone. So with that, I will wish you a good day and I will see you in the next video.